Hi guys, this is the first video about setting up a backup Unraid server to keep a backup copy of your most valuable data. Not only that, but also how to use that same server as a failover server for the times when your main server's off. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. So in the last video, I took a look at shrinking an Unraid array. For me, I wanted to remove a couple of disks from the main server and use them in a backup and kind of failover server I was building, and that's why I wanted to shrink my array. Now I've had a whole load of questions about this server and how I use it, with a lot of my patrons being interested in this and asking if I'd make a video about it. Well, I normally thank my patrons for their support at the end of my videos, but today, I'm going to thank them at the beginning. So to all of my awesome patrons and supporters out there, thank you so much guys for supporting me. This video is for you. Now there are a few reasons why I built this server. And this latest server brings up to four Unraid servers that I currently run. Now obviously I wanted the backup server to back up my important data. That's pretty obvious. But I wanted it to be able to do more than just that. I didn't want the backup server to be running all the time. I thought that would be a waste of power. So the backup server has to spend most of its life switched off. And so I wanted my main server, the source server, to be able to switch on the backup server when it needed to do a backup and switch it off when the backup had finished. And that was it for my original plan. But then things changed. And then I think it was just after Christmas time, I had a problem with one of the disks, the XFS file system became corrupted and I thought I might have lost a bunch of data. Yeah, of course, my really important data was backed up elsewhere. I had that on various external hard drives and some of it on one of my other servers. But I actually started feeling quite sad, thinking I might have lost some of my media. Yeah, I know we all say that media is not really important data. We can always get a copy of it again. But really, is it going to be that easy to get it back to exactly how it was before? Now, all of my media library, it's all H.265. And it took me a while to transcode everything that wasn't H.265 into H.265. And as well, if you've got some pretty obscure stuff, maybe some old 80s TV shows and stuff, you know, is it going to be that easy to get those things back? I don't know. And you really don't start really thinking about these things until you think you might have lost some. Now, luckily, I was able to recover all of my data off the drive and I ended up not really losing much data. I ran XFS repair on the disk and I ended up with a big folder full of lost and found files thanks to a really awesome container called Discover that analyzes your disks and uses Elasticsearch I was able to get pretty much everything back and in fact I actually recorded myself doing that and there's a video coming about that soon. So because of that I decided well I've saved a whole bunch of space when I converted everything to H.265 and I thought to myself you know what I'm actually going to do with this space. It will probably take me a couple of years to fill it up. So really, it's kind of pointless. It's a waste of actually having those disks. So that's why I shrunk the array, took a couple of disks out, bought a couple more disks, and I thought it's time to build a backup server that's going to be a media backup server as well. So now I knew I was going to have a full copy of all my media. This got me thinking. So like most of us, my main server was running 24-7. And if I have a look now how much power it's using, well, it's using about 150, 160 watts. Yeah, I've got a VM running, so it's using more than if it was just idle. But you can see it's using a fair bit of power. So I thought to myself, how cool would it be if I could have it when the main server shuts down, that the backup server starts up and it actually takes over the media server duties running MB. I could save a whole bunch of electricity and it would be pretty fun to do as well. So I thought to myself, how can I make it when one MB is down that the other one takes over and all of the clients that connect to it, they don't know the difference. Well, I started thinking I'm probably going to have to use some kind of load balancing system to do this. And I thought to myself, hey, Space Invader, you're overthinking this, man. It's easier than you think. So let's just turn on this backup server here. OK, so on my network, my main server, its IP address is 10.10.20.199. And my backup server's IP is 10.10.20.197. Right, so here we are on the main server, or the source server, and MB's running here. So if I open up MB, we can see here that MB runs on the IP address of the server it's running on, 
on port 8096. So obviously MB running on the main source server would run on 10.10.20.199 on port number 8096. And on the backup or destination server, it would run on 10.10.20.197 on the same port 8096. So let's take an MB client running on this Nvidia Shield Pro. Now obviously if it's connected to the main server, it's connected to 10.10.20.199 and then the port 8096. And so how things stand, if it wants to connect to the backup server, well it's going to connect to a totally different MB server and on the client it's going to be seen as two different things. And that's not what we want. So let's take a look at MB running on the backup server here. Now I'm going to edit the template here and as we can see the network type is set to bridge and that's why it uses the same IP as what your Unraid server is. So if we change the network type from bridge to custom BR0 here we can specify an IP address for this container. And so I'm going to make this 10.10.20.210 and with that done I'm going to scroll down and click apply. And now if I go to the containers web UI, we can see it's running on 10.10.20.210 on the port 8096. And so we can see the IP of MB here. Now if we do exactly the same on the source server as well, we set the IP of the container to be the same, 10.10.20.210. This time when the MB client's connected to the backup server, MB running on 10.10.20.210, if the backup server is to be shut down and the source server starts up, well the IP address for MB is exactly the same, so as far as the MB client's concerned, it's the same MB server that it's connected to. And so long as we keep the app data or the database synced, and the media files are synced on both servers as well, well the MB watch history, all of the library and everything will be synced perfectly. Now I'm using MB but it should be exactly the same using Plex, and if you use a reverse proxy as well, well we can use the same technique by setting a static IP address for the reverse proxy and making that the same on both servers and the reverse proxy will work in exactly the same way. The only thing you'll need to do is if using Schwag in the proxy configuration files to use an IP address instead of using a custom Docker network for the containers you want to use. But later when I set up all the scripts I'll show you how to do all of that. And talking about scripts, this is how I have the scripts set up on my server. Is at 9pm, the script on the source server checks if a VM that I use as a daily driver is running, and if this VM isn't running, it will add a flag file to a share on the source server. Now after that, the script will automatically start up the backup server and power it on. And the backup server also has a script on it, which is set to run when the server first starts. This script checks for that flag file on the source server, and if it sees the flag file, it will start the backup process, but if it doesn't see the flag file, it won't do it. The reason for this is if I want to turn on the server manually at another time, I don't want the script to fire and do any copying. So if the flag file is present, the script uses rsync to sync the movies and the TV shows from the source server over to the backup server. It also syncs any other files that I want backed up too. Then lastly, it copies the database files from MB on the source server over to the backup server. Then when this is complete, it writes another flag file now to the source server, which will tell the source server it's okay to shut down. The backup server will check and see when the source server shut down, and after it has, it will automatically start the MB container and any other containers that I want starting as well. So now the data and the media have automatically been backed up, and the MB data such as watch history etc has also been synced too. So the MB duties are now being done by the backup server, and this server is using only about 40 watts, so for 12 hours a day it's saving about 100 watts an hour. So now the next thing that happens at 9 o'clock the next day, the script's triggered on the backup server, which basically does the opposite of what just happened. It starts up the source server, and when it sees the source server started, it doesn't sync any media back to the source server, because I make sure that nothing downloads on the backup server at all. That's all just done on the main server. 
But what it does do is it syncs back the MB database files to the source server, so any watch history that's happened during the night is synced back to the main server. And when that's finished, the backup server shuts itself down, and so the MB duty is now being handled back by the source server. So that's basically how I have the script set up on my server. Now I've put the scripts I use up onto GitHub and I've also made them so they can work in a few different ways. You can change various variables. For example, you can have the source server start up the backup server and the backup server only do the data syncing. It doesn't do any kind of other duties and then it shuts itself down. But anyway, we'll take a look at the scripts in the next video where we'll go through how to configure them and the different ways they can run. But for now, I think we'll wrap up this video. Now, I really hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you did, then please hit up the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Anyway, guys, it's time for me to go now. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good. And I'll catch you in the next video.